Who's you? The advantage of having a name that starts with Z. <laughs> <laughs> so and to that and, and much more, I owe a great deal to my parents, Ken and Mary Lou, are here today, as Ken has said. They, you know, they, they've been there throughout my life, so thank you for being your mom and dad. Co-management. My job as uh, the Executive Administrator of Credit and Fish and Wildlife Commission is to figure out how to do it within, as what Henry described, that uh, delicately delegated sovereignty that our member tribes have entrusted us with. The definitional problem, if we would listen to the then George Meyer back from the state, and we agreed we could play these roles up here because if George and Tom could call each other good friends now, I recall Star Lake at one point. <laughs> <laughs> you know, last time I checked, and my mother can attest, I was never that good at math, but co-management, if I count, is not a four-letter word. There's more than four letters in it. It's certainly not profane by any definition of profanity I ever understood. And so I guess I quickly learned in my job is I don't care what you call it. It's about what it is and how you go about it. If you call it cooperative management, um, I often joke with this staff, I don't care if you call it team. What it really means, I think, as, as George and Wago tried to tell us earlier, is listen to those folks who came before us. And I, I, I listened to Henry's story about his dad and about Dick Grinnell and their initial trip to the Great Lakes Fishery Commission as to what they were really doing there. And it's very simple. It was the power of presence. Just being there. Not a word had to be said. As I recall the story, about maybe in the first day or after the second day, the folks up in the fishery commission started poking each other, saying, now, who's that? Who, who? And they switch. And, and, and finally, Carlos went over, and I think, I don't know, your dad, Henry, or Dick, he finally said, now, who are you guys, and why are you here? And the lesson I take away from that is just being there made a difference. They hadn't been introduced. They hadn't been formally integrated in the process but there was a new kid on the block that had to be dealt with. And so if we at Glitwick and if those who work for the tribe understand their jobs that we're supposed to do for the tribe in our area of natural resource management and co-management, is the first job is to always be there and let those other governments know, those other people know who make decisions that affect the tribe and the rights, that the tribes are there, they exist, their rights exist. As John Olson said, you know, he may not be all that bright. He's very profound in his observations. They're not going away. So if you don't know what else to say, at least remind everyone else that the rights exist. The other aspect that always has to be remembered about how we do co-management, at least from the chair I sit in right now, is never forget how important it is that the tribes themselves have come together to co-manage amongst themselves. These treaties are among a nation that have been divided into bands, as Mick Eisen likes to point out. This is one nation that has somehow been divided in, in this modern system. But the notion of a shared origin, a shared story, shared history, shared language, shared treaties, shared areas, that it's really up to the tribes themselves to be co-managers among themselves first and foremost. And what that tells me, and as Jim Schlender taught me, and as Henry noted today, is that an agency like Glitwick is not just another DNR. What George Nwago was trying to tell us all today is, is that if I approach my job like, like George did at one point when he was the secretary of the DNR, I would fail. I have to come to it from the perspective, as folks have told us, you've got to think India. You have to remember, I think, as Mark Flonum argued before the United States Supreme Court in the Mille Lacs case. The first point he tried to make with that court was, this is not about government duking it out. This is about Indian people just trying to be who they are and why they are here. And if we and our staff can understand that in at least some small way, certainly not as profoundly as George can, and as George tried to express to us, we are well on our way to doing a job for the tribes that is only their job to do, no other agency other than a tribal agency, no other government other than a tribal government can or should do that job for the tribes. And so first and foremost, we have to remember that the co-management is among the tribes themselves.